Eric Anders fans can finally take a sigh of relief, as the UFC star has decided to make his return to the octagon. After a stint with Netflix's Cobra Kai, Anders left fans wondering if he had hung his gloves up for good, but we all can now rest a little easier. Today, let's look at Eric Anders' journey from MMA to acting, then back to MMA. First up, let's talk about Eric's return to the octagon. Anders returned to the UFC last week, where he faced off against Kyle Dawkins in a middleweight fight that was featured as the night's co-main event. Dawkins himself was coming off a loss against Roman Delice, where he was knocked out in the very first round back on June 18th. This loss dropped Dawkins' UFC record to 2-3, and, and overall MMA pro record to 11-3. Given his recent losses to decisions, Anders had enough and took matters into his own hands. Finding Dawkins' chin early in the first round, he made sure not to let up. Landing significant left-handed strikes, he managed to shake down Dawkins. And in the second round, Eric dropped his opponent to the ground and went to work on him with hammer fists. The referee stopped the fight, and Anders rose as the clear victor of the match. Your boy, Eric Anders! Anders was able to execute his game plan perfectly by keeping the decision out of the judge's hands and firmly within his own. He desperately needed this win to end his two-match losing streak, and he was able to show the world that he may be 35 years old, but he can still perform at the highest level. This win gives Anders a huge boost in confidence and brings his UFC record to 7-7. He holds a record of 5-5 as a middleweight and 2-2 as a light heavyweight in UFC. Now, let's talk about Anders' last UFC appearance before he left for Cobra Kai. Eric faced off against South Korea's Jun Young Park on May 21st in a middleweight bout at UFC Fight Night 206 in Las Vegas. Anders dominated Park for most of the fight, landing significant strikes and attempting more than 20 takedown attempts throughout three rounds of combat. Anders kept trying to land his lethal left hand and use his power advantage, while Park was reduced to defending and countering all his moves. In the final round, Park finally started being more aggressive, keeping Anders against the cage and trying to land his strikes. However, Eric thwarted his plan by by trying to grab his leg and break his rhythm, stopping Park from landing a finishing blow. The fight ended in a controversial third split decision against Anders. In an interview following the fight, he admitted that he was shocked by the judge's decision. He also went on to say that, looking at Park's body language, you could see that not even he was convinced about the win. Park's performance in the final round may have edged him the win in the judge's eyes, but the outcry against the decision demonstrated that most viewers had pegged Anders as the clear winner. Your winner by split decision, the Iron Turtle, Junior This brought his overall UFC record down to 6-7 and 14-7 and and in his overall pro MMA career. Next up, what was Anders doing in between his appearances on the screen? We do not doubt that his last defeat stung him a lot. Even Eric admitted that it took him some time, but he was able to shake off that loss and eventually make his way back to the octagon, before our favorite modern-day gladiator blew our minds by appearing on Netflix back in September. He was preparing for the Grappling Fury 5 tournament. He wanted to keep himself active in the downtime between fights, and since grappling contests have a lower risk of injury, it was ideal for him to compete. In August, Anders took on Andre Petrovsky, his fellow middleweight in UFC, to keep himself sharp and ready for UFC matches. At the beginning of the match, Petrovsky was able to execute a successful single leg takedown, transitioning immediately to side control. Anders, in trying to escape from the side control, left his neck exposed, which allowed Petrovsky to finish him off in an anaconda choke. Even though Anders had to tap out at 132 into the match, we're sure it would give him the insight and valuable experience to improve his ground game. Grappling contests are always dominated by Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners, and losing to a brown belt is by no means shameful. Now, what's next for Eric Anders? The former Alabama linebacker took the MMA world by storm when he took out Rafael Natal, an esteemed veteran of the sport, in under three minutes. Ever since, Anders' fighting career has been on a roller coaster. He has faced off against very high-level opponents, such as Tiago Santos, Darren Stewart, Brendan Allen, and Lyoto Machida. Before he faced off against Dawkins, Anders had two more fights left on his UFC contract. He was quoted on UFC's official website that he was looking to win both his remaining bouts and get a new contract. The Anders we all know and love is always excited about the fights and is looking to knock out his opponents. He is under no illusions that he can continue fighting in UFC all his life. He's admitted that the sun is setting on his career and would love to explore the new opportunities his time in the octagon has brought him. As always, he's looking for what's next for him, and as soon as the acting role fell into his lap, he took
took it. This came as a surprise to many fans that Anders may leave the cage soon. We all know that his career in the UFC hasn't always been perfect, but he's delivered entertainment and excitement to his fans and haters alike. He's pretty happy with the money he's made from fighting professionally and can be comfortable in his retirement. Let's not get sad here now. It's unlikely that we've seen the last of your boy. He plans to pursue his acting career further and will continue to entertain us. Cobra Kai and your boy. First, let's look at how Anders landed the role. Talking to an interviewer, Anders explained how he was approached for the role of Vicente by the crew of Cobra Kai. According to him, movie and series producers have been moving south for some time now due to the taxes being lower than they are in California. Anders was acquainted with some of the stunt coordinators who came to his gym in Birmingham back in 2018 when they were working on an MMA movie called Embattled. Coincidentally, the same stunt coordinators were also recently working on Netflix's Cobra Kai Season 5 and happened to meet Eric in Atlanta. They were looking for a big Mexican-looking fella to fight Johnny Lawrence, the star of the show. When it was all said and done, Anders got invited to audition for Vicente's role, and eventually he managed to land the part. His kids love Karate Kid and Cobra Kai, so that made him more than excited to portray Vicente in the show. Up next, the battle of Johnny Lawrence versus Vicente. Cobra Kai, which was number one on Netflix, aired its fifth season on September 9th. Eric Anders makes his appearance on the show in episode two as an MMA fighter in Mexico. The series showcased MMA versus karate, where Anders' character Vicente takes on William Zabka's iconic portrayal of Johnny Lawrence. The conflict begins with an argument between the two characters, which eventually boils down to conflict. We can see that Vicente nearly knocks out Lawrence with a Darcy choke, but doesn't get to finish it. Robbie, Johnny's son in the series, throws a pepper at his father, who then uses it to blind Vicente and finally finishes the fight with a beautiful head kick. The fight is also featured in the trailer for season 5 of the series. Anders took to Instagram to suggest that it possibly wasn't the end of the fight. That means we may see more of Vicente and Eric Anders in Cobra Kai. He also admired the 60-year-old William Zabka, saying that the actor doesn't use stunt doubles and does all the kicking and punching on the set himself. Finally, let's talk about Anders' thoughts on acting. Eric has said in multiple interviews that his fighting career is ending, and he might just start delving into his new acting career some more. He was pretty happy with the show's inclusion of former fighters like Tyron Woodley and UFC's own karate kid, Stephen Thompson. According to him, being on the number one show on Netflix allows MMA as a sport its time in the spotlight. Everything wasn't easy for him though, as he revealed that he had trouble speaking Spanish for his role, and how the showrunners had to voice over some of his lines. He also expressed his displeasure on how they practiced a certain action sequence hundreds of times, only for the director to go another way at the very last moment. However, we think that acting may be a step in the right direction for him. His age is definitely starting to take a toll on his MMA career, and acting will allow him to kick up his feet and relax. It may naturally be the next step for him, from football to MMA, and finally into acting. Anders has proved himself in every direction he's gone. And with that, that's a wrap for this video. What do you guys think? Would you like to see Anders again in action-packed movies and TV series? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.